Hey guys and welcome to another video. My name is Kirsty and today I'm going to be sharing with you the August releases that I am most excited for. Now what I think is that there's some good releases coming out in August but I think it's just building up to September where just so many new releases are coming out. There must be about 20, 25 that I really want to get. So September's going to be a crazy, crazy month for buying. But August, let's focus on August. There's about 10, I think, that I'm really excited for. And of course, because I haven't read these books yet, I just like the look of them, I like the sound of them. So I don't know exactly what happens in these books. So the synopsis that I'm going to be giving you is literally just off the blurb. Yeah, because that's that's all I know about it, so I can only share the information with you that I myself know. So let's just get on with it, shall we? Okay, so first we have Blight by Alexandra Duncan, and this is out on the 1st of August. Blight is about 17-year-old Tempest Torres, who has lived on the Agostar farm, um, which is north of Atlanta, and she's lived there since she was found as a baby outside of the gates. Now, at 17 years old, she's working at the security force that guards the gates of Agrostar. And in the security force, they are watching out for scavengers, um, who are people who would rather steal genetically engineered food rather than work really hard for it, which is what everyone else has to do. And then there's a group of rebels, and they accidentally set off an explosion in the research compound, and this explosion releases into the air a blight, which kills every living thing in its path, including humans. Now, Tempest has blight resistance seed, and she teams up with a scavenger boy named Alder and runs to get help. But when they finally arrive at the Agrostar headquarters, they discover that there is an even bigger plot behind the release of the Blight. And it's up to these two 17 year olds to stop it from happening again. So this book sounds really exciting. Uh, it's like a dystopian science fiction. Um, I've never read anything by Alexandra Duncan before, but I'm excited to give this one a go. The next book is Piper Perish by Kayla Cogan, and this is also out on the 1st of August. Piper Perish is about a girl named Piper Perish and her two best friends, Enzo and Kit. Now, Piper and her best friends, they've always wanted to move to New York City, study art, because she literally lives for art and for her whole life it's always been Piper's dream to go to New York City and study and now that her senior year is halfway over she feels like she's never been more ready to jump into the city and get her life started but she's about to graduate and she notices things with Enzo and Kit are feeling a little bit off and her chances of going to art school are looking more impossible and three different guys have claimed a piece of Piper's heart and Piper's sister's tyrannical mental state seems to thwart any kind of happiness that Piper and her family want but Piper's art might just be enough for Piper to get out of this and in order to do that she might have to give up everything that she already knows and just to go out by herself. Okay so that's the premise of the book. The thing that drew me most to this book was the cover because it's absolutely beautiful and I also love reading books to do with art because I just find it really interesting. The premise does sound a little bit tropey but I'm willing to give it a chance. Again Kayla Cogan is another author, author that I have never read before so I'm interested to see what her writing style is like. The next book is one I'm sure you've all heard of and that is Ramona Blue by Julie Murphy and this is out in the UK on the 10th of August. I know it's already out in the US um, so I'm a little bit sad about that but Ramona Blue is about a lesbian main character and the only thing that I know about this book is that she meets this guy and she starts to question her own sexuality and she thinks that she might actually be bisexual and not a lesbian. Um, there have been a lot of criticisms about this book saying 
the guy turning a girl straight kind of thing but what I feel like this book is about is that sexuality is very fluid and it's about this girl called Ramona just finally figuring out that actually sexuality isn't a fixed thing in you know anyone's life it's fluid and I think Julie Murphy is actually really brave to um, take this issue head on and write about it in a young adult contemporary way so I'm interested to see what it's like I myself I cannot speak for what the representation is like but I am really excited to read this book the next book on my list is Domina by LS Hilton I know this is already out in hardback but I have Maestra in paperback so I have to get Domina in paperback as well and this is also out on the 10th of August. Domina is the second book in the series and I'm not going to reveal the plot for it because I don't want to give away any spoilers for people who haven't read Maestra yet but it does follow on from the events of Maestra and I've heard that it is an action packed read that will literally just keep you on the edge of your seat the entire time. I did like Maestra, I didn't find it great, like I, didn't, I don't think that it's like one of the best reads of 2017 but I did enjoy reading it um, so I can't wait to read Domina and I can't wait to find out what happens to Judith Rashley. The next thing on my list is Paper Girls Volume 3 by Brian K. Vaughan. This is a graphic novel and it follows these young girls who do paper rounds but they get sucked into this magic world. Again, I can't talk about what happens in Volume 2 because I don't want to give away any spoilers but it does centre around these um, young girls who get sucked into this magical world but I can tell you that Paper Girls Volume 1 it centres around four 12 year olds who are newspaper delivery girls and it's set and it's um, it starts in Halloween in 1988 and these newspaper delivery girls they discover the most important story ever and Paper Girls is sort of a suburban drama and it's got like otherworldly mysteries and I, th I thought it was really good because it talks about coming of age and it's got drama, it's got action, it's got mysterious new worlds in it so I am very excited to read volume 3 because I really really loved volumes 1 and 2 and this comes out on the 8th of August. Next book on my list is also a graphic novel and that is Thornhill by Pam Smy and this is out on the 24th of August. And this graphic novel looks really really interesting because it's got parallel stories and one story is told in prose and the other story is told in pictures. The premise of this graphic novel is about this character called Ella and she is unravelling the mysteries of the girl who lives next door to her. It's set in 1982 and it centres around Mary who is a patient at the Thornhill Institute and the Institute is a home where orphans go and live and this Thornhill Institute is closing its doors, it's shutting down and all of the children need to find new places to live. Now while Mary's friends are all being adopted and they're going into new homes, Mary is left to face a bully alone all by herself and Mary's revenge on this bully will have a long lasting effect on the bully on Mary and on the Thornhill Institute itself. So we have the 1982 perspective and then we have the 2016 perspective which is about Ella and Ella's perspective is about when she moves to a new town she doesn't know anyone and from her room on the very top floor of her new house she can see the Thornhill Institute and she looks out this window and one day she can see a young girl in the Thornhill Institute window and she's determined to bef befriend this girl because um, Ella doesn't know anyone in her new town um, so she sees this young girl she's like okay maybe I can be friends with her while she's trying to befriend this young girl she is unraveling loads of mysteries about Thornhill's past and I think it's going to be really really interesting it's got paranormal supernatural moments in it it's I love the way it's told in the two different formats um, and spanning two different timelines 
Um, so yeah, it'll be really exciting. The next book they have is The Dazzling Heights by Catherine McGee. This is the second book um, in the Thousandth Floor series. I haven't actually read The Thousandth Floor yet. I do have it, but I haven't read it, so I'm not even sure what The Thousandth Floor is about. I'm only getting The Dazzling Heights because I know that I really want to read The Thousandth Floor, so I can marathon read them, and because they both have really really beautiful covers. All I know about The Thousandth Floor is that it's set in a dystopian setting of New York City and it follows multiple um, character perspectives and it's about these five teenagers who the story follows, about them finding their place in this um, dystopian world and about their journey getting to the top and it says in the synopsis that if you're at the top there's no way to go but down. Um, I am a bit wary about the multiple perspectives because I do get confused quite easily when it comes to multiple perspectives in books but they do look like they will be um, very easy to distinguish between so I do really really want to read it it's just so I can see what it's like. Um, the Dazzling Heights is coming out on the 29th of August. The next book they have is one that I know you all know about and that is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. Now this is the first in a collection where young adult authors take on superheroes and turn them into their own. So they create a new storyline just so they can introduce these superheroes to a new generation of readers. Wonder Woman Warbringer follows the character of Diana Prince and now this is before she becomes Wonder Woman. Now I don't actually know the synopsis of this book so I'm just gonna read it out to you. So, Diana longs to prove herself to her legendary warrior sisters. But when the opportunity finally comes, she throws away her chance at glory and breaks Amazon law, risking exile to save a mere mortal. Even worse, Elia Corellis is no ordinary girl, and with this single brave act, Diana may have just doomed the world. Elia just wanted to escape her overprotective brother with a semester at sea. She doesn't know she's being hunted. When a bomb detonates aboard her ship, Elia is rescued by a mysterious, girl of extraordinary strength and forced to confront a horrible truth. Elia is a warbringer, a direct descendant of the infamous Helen of Troy, fated to bring an age of bloodshed and misery. Together Diana and Elia will face an army of enemies, mortal and divine, determined to either destroy or possess the warbringer. If they have any hope, of saving both of their worlds, they will have to stand side by side against the tide of war. Now, I love Wonder Woman. I absolutely love it. I loved the comics, I went to see the film, and I loved the film. I was just sat there in a mess, crying pretty much the entire way through. I cannot wait to read Lee Bardugo's take on probably one of my favourite superheroes of all time. Um, in the UK, Wonder Woman Warbringer comes out on the 31st of August. And finally, the last book that I am excited for in August is A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtues by Mackenzie Lee. And this comes out on the 10th of August. I think in the UK you can buy it on Book Depository now, but I'm taking it from um, a list on Amazon. So on Amazon you can't buy it till the 10th. Um, on Book Depository you can buy it now and I know it's already out in America so you can buy it there as well. So A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtues follows a boy named Henry Montag and he's grown up in a wealthy family, he's been sent to boarding schools and he was always been brought up to be bred a gentleman but he was never one to follow the rules. With the finest boarding schools in England and a strict father, it was never really enough to curb his passions for going off and trying to do his own thing, like going to gambling halls and having late nights with bottles of alcohol beside him. Or even waking up in the arms of men and women that he doesn't even know. But as Monty um, embarks on his tour of Europe, his quest, I guess, 
um, for passion and vice is in danger of coming to an end. His father expects him to take over the family estate um, when Monty returns back from his grand tour of Europe, but Monty is also nursing an impossible crush on his best friend, Percy. Still, this is Monty we're talking about, so he doesn't like to give up. Um, he still wants to keep trudging along, even though he knows that think certain things are against him. And even with his younger sister, Felicity, in tow, he try, he's gonna try and make this tour of Europe his last hurrah, and to try and get as close to Percy as he can. But when one of Monty's reckless decisions turns their trip abroad into a harrowing manhunt across Europe, it calls into question everything he knows. So Get Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtues has a bisexual male protagonist, um, and it's got traveling abroad everywhere, it's got just everything that I could possibly want in a novel and I have heard some amazing amazing reviews of this book and I've also heard that it's very humorous as well so I look forward to being made to laugh by a book because that rarely happens I don't really cry or laugh at books it's got to take something immense to make me do that so I'm really excited to see that aspect of it. Right guys, that's it. Those are the August releases that I am most excited for. I will leave links in the description box below to where you can pre-order all of these books or buy if they are available in certain places. So yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you've got any questions or comments, leave them in the comments box below. And it would mean the world to me if you gave this channel a subscribe because I'm still in the early stages of this channel and just clicking that subscribe button would mean the world to me. Um, just give me that little bit of extra motivation to keep filming for you. And I do post videos every Tuesdays and Fridays, so don't forget to click the notification bell so you can be notified when a new video comes up. So, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!